What's up guys, welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host Caleb. If you guys want to support the channel, you can click on that whatnot link in the description down below. You'll get a free $15 when you sign up to spend on some magic cards and you'll be supporting the channel when you do it. Additionally, you can subscribe to my Patreon. Not only will you be supporting the channel, but additionally, you'll get more say in what decks I cover. Special shout out to my high contributing patrons, Newsom, you rock. Now let's get into today's Deck Tech and I'm really excited about this one because this is going to be a budget version of my Henzi and Amori deck. Now, I've gotten a ton of gameplay in with this deck, so I'm excited to build a budget version and make it more accessible. More people need to be on the Henzi and Amori All Creatures train. Now, people think this deck plays a little clunky because of the um, companion mechanic, but honestly, what you want to look for is a turn 1 Mana Dork into a turn 3 Amori to hand. Once you can get that down, it's really easy to play your Henzi, then you get your Amori on the battlefield, and you're ready to start dropping bombs onto the battlefield. Now, this deck does get to run some of those creatures that other decks don't get to run or struggle to run because they're so creature-reliant, such as Ruik Thar, right? This will absolutely punish you if you're not playing a high density of creatures. This is really going to punish your opponents and make it to where they have to think about every spell they want to cast. Similarly, we have Nikia. Now, this one, again, hard to run in a not all creature deck because you can't cast non-creature permanents but you do get double mana so this is why this deck has a lot of power to it and especially since we are reducing the cost of all of our creatures we're slamming some really big threats out on the battlefield very early in the game we are on uh, Goreclaw as well with Goreclaw, Henzi, and Amori all of our creatures with above four power are getting reduced by four so we're slamming something like an avatar of slaughter on the battlefield for four mana there's some absolutely broken and things we can do in this deck notably avatar of slaughter just a really good card i found that does some work in this deck since it does sack itself at the instep it doesn't give your opponent's creatures um a double strike and you just get double strike for that turn to really make their life hell one of the best cards i found in the deck and it's kind of surprised me is balor the fact that this guy can enter the battlefield Dome someone for 5 damage and then instantly die after dealing another damage trigger equal to the cards in their hand is kind of insane. I've done over 21 damage to someone straight to their face just by casting this guy and attacking them with him. So if that sounds like a deck tick you want to get into... Let's get into it. Let's kick it off by talking about the creatures we want to blitz out. Ondu Giant, Primeval Herald, Solemn Simulacrum, and Rampant Rejuvenator. You're going to be really happy to see these in your opener hand. They're going to ramp you in the early game and draw you into more cards. Archpriest of Shadows, Phyrexian Delver, and Orcus Prince of the Undead. These are going to be solid recursion spells, and Orcus even has more utility because it can also be a board wipe. Bighorner Rancher, Alina Kessing Trapper, and Leafkin Avenger. Now, these are very flexible cards because you can blitz them out and get that instant mana, especially if you have like an 8 8 on the battlefield. These can be very useful for that, but you can also use them just as a setup, right? Throw them on the battlefield, then try to go off next turn, and you can generate a ton of mana. Again, these cards are very flexible that way. Ruthless Technomancer just seems like a lot better whenever he instantly kills himself and draws you a card after generating you a ton of mana. Not to mention in this deck, he's kind of akin to Dockside because he's only going to cost us 2 mana and then generate a ton of treasures. Disciple of Bolus and Shadowheart Justicator can draw us a ton of cards. Again, Shadowheart's one of those very flexible cards, but I have a problem with Shadowheart. She never stays on the battlefield. They do not want you to let you on tap with this card and draw up to eight cards so the fact that we can cast this for two mana and then spend two more mana to instantly sacrifice a creature to draw a ton of cards just makes her amazing in this deck dragon mage and null spine can draws a ton of cards i really like null spine in this deck it's kind of an awkward card because you can't cast it before combat and get that instant attack trigger but the fact that we can instantly slam this on the battlefield for sometimes just five mana and then draw eight cards is pretty massive 8 cards is honestly on the lower end even. Timeless Witness is usually a terrible card, but in this deck it's 2 mana and an Eternal Witness. Yeah, we're going to take that. Incinerator of the Guilty. I like this card. It's new. We're going to have a lot of cards in our graveyard with high CMCs to get rid of, so this can really start taking away our opponent's key pieces. Kogla the Titanate, Massacre Worm, Ravenous Chupacabra, all solid removal spells on creatures. They come in the battlefield, deal a lot of damage, and do what they're supposed to do. 
Necron Deathmark does have flash on it, so it really does catch our opponents off guard when you say in response and they're like, what? That's the Amorial Creature deck. Bane of Progress, this guy's just one of my staples in most of my decks, and he's even better in this deck. When you can wipe the board of all artifacts and enchantments for only four mana and guarantee that it's not going to hit any of your things, yeah, that does feel amazing. Deathbringer Regent, very easy to cast, solid board wipe on a creature. Steel Hellkite, again, very flexible here. We can hard cast this guy and really become a threat, or we can just blitz him out and deal with the threat. Balor, again, this guy just puts in an insane amount of work. He's going to deal five damage when he comes in. He's going to deal like five to seven damage whenever he deals combat damage, and then he's going to deal another five to seven damage whenever he dies. This guy can just kill a player out of nowhere. Giant Ataphage, another card I really don't play in other decks because you're not untapping with it. This deck doesn't really matter. We're going to cast this guy for five mana, deal damage to someone instantly, and get that token copy right away. Tree Shaker Chimera, very solid in the deck. It's kind of like a pseudo board wipe, and then additionally, it's going to draw you four cards whenever it dies, because we are going to blitz this out for sure. Bringer of the Last Gift is super solid in this deck. We're going to end up with a lot of creatures in our graveyard. If we get stopped and they remove our most important pieces, it's going to be easy to get them back. It's going to be a super solid card right after a board wipe. You can get your Henzi back, your Amori back, and all of the things you've cast this game. Port Razor is another one of those cards that you're never going to untap with, right? Well, when we blitz them out and people tapped out, this can kind of just end the game with the right cards in hand. That's another reason I like Hinzi and Amori. No one really knows how big of a threat you are because your threats are in your hand. So there's definitely scenarios where you can blitz out one or two creatures, one of them's Port Razor, and you can just go off and kill some players. Avatar of Slaughter, again, kind of a terrible card, but in this deck, it's going to do exactly what we want to. We're going to get a massive turn, deal a ton of damage, and then Avatar of Slaughter is going to sacrifice itself, we're going to get a card off of it, and our opponents aren't going to enjoy those double strikey creatures. Not to mention, he is doming someone for 16 damage. Moving on to the core of the deck, we have Kefket Crucible Goliath. This guy's honestly a super solid value piece in the deck. We're going to sacrifice our creature with the highest CMC, and then we're going to essentially explore into a creature with lower CMC. So again, we're just replacing our creatures with more creatures and getting a lot of value out of it while we do that. Goreclaw, also amazing in the deck the fact that all of our creatures are already reduced by two and this can reduce our big creatures by an additional two means we can have an explosive turn the dream is to have goreclaw and gwenna on the battlefield because in this scenario you have henzi gwenna amori and your goreclaw on the battlefield anything that's six to five mana and has five power will essentially free slash net you mana and that's going to generate some insane board states Nikia and Ruikthar. Again, these two creatures just really abuse the fact that this is an all-creature deck, and we're going to get a ton of value off of them. Bramble Sovereign, Jaxus, and Felden of the Third Path. We have a lot of really good creatures in this deck, and I just want to generate more of them. Notably, Bramble Sovereign is sneaky good in this deck. If you think about it like this, our creatures are already getting reduced by two mana, right? So all we have to do is pay the full cost of a creature, and we're going to get a blitzed version and a version to untap with next turn. Samut was honestly made for this deck. As soon as we blitz out a creature and it deals combat damage, we're going to get a card off of that. This is another reason I'm in love with Henzi All Creatures, because every single creature in your deck is essentially a cantrip as long as we blitz it out, and that's 70% of our deck. Now, whenever you take into account the card advantage pieces like Samut, now every single creature in your deck is not only a cantrip, it's additionally card advantage. Chainer Nightmare Adept is super solid, though those big creatures end up in the graveyard and we can now cast them from the graveyard. Notably, Blitz is an alternate casting cost, so we can Blitz creatures out from our graveyard using Chainer. Marin of Clan Nel Toth, we're sacrificing a lot of creatures, we want to get more value off of those creatures, we can return them to our hand or the battlefield with Marin. Sarath the Viper's Fang, just a solid piece of protection, right? People are going to be gunning for Amori as soon as they realize how the deck works. If they kill Henzi, we don't care, we'll just recast Henzi, but if they do kill Amori, Amori is probably just going to stay dead. 
Vivictus Asmati the Dyer, one of my pet cards, and honestly puts in a lot of work. We're going to get rid of our opponent's worst things. We're going to get rid of one of our things. We get a shot at getting a giant creature off the top, and they're probably going to get something worse than their best piece they had on the battlefield. Kamal is a really solid game ender in this deck. We have a lot of creatures that tap for a ton of mana, so reanimating a lot of our lands is definitely on the table. And then additionally, he has an insane synergy with Port Razor. He triggers on each combat, and then Port Razor gives us up to three additional combat steps, or sorry, four additional combat steps. So it's going to give all of our creatures plus 12, plus 12 by the end of that. That's honestly just going to be lethal. Soul of the Harvest, Beast Whisperer, Gurux Pack Leader, we want to be drawing cards and replacing these creatures whenever we cast them, and these are solid cards to do that. If we're not using them, we're using Toski Bearer of Secrets or Orin Frostfang to get in for some damage and then draw additional cards. Grim Horror Specs, Midnight Reaper essentially doubles up on the fact that we're drawing additional cards whenever our creatures die. Somberwald Sage, this is an incredible ramp spell in the deck. I mean, casting this turn three just puts us up to six mana we can use on our creatures. That's going to be pretty crazy. Spore Frog, just to protect us from some of those crackbacks. Illuminar Saras, we have a lot of fodder on the battlefield that needs sacrificed, and it has a high casting cost, so this is going to be a perfect way to get additional value off of the creatures we blitz out. Reclamation Sage, Caustic Caterpillar, just some solid removal pieces. I briefly wanted to talk about the ramp pieces. We have Lean War Elves, Elves of Deep Shadows, Gyre Sage. Notably, this thing starts tapping for a ton of mana late game. Secure Tri Builder, Under Mountain Adventurer. Now, we have a lot of creatures on our battlefield, so it's pretty easy for us to keep the initiative and really disincentivize our opponents from attacking us because it's like, hey, if you attack me and take this, I'm just going to hit you with the crack back. And that ends up being a really strong political piece. Illusion Carotid, this is going to tap for 2 mana 9 times out of 10. And then we have Gilanra, just a solid way to replace the creatures we cast, right? There's a lot of high CMC creatures in this deck, so now we're going to draw an additional card whenever we cast one of them using Gilanra. Before you go anywhere, don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying these deck techs. Additionally, I am going to put the non-budget version in the comments down below. Leave a comment if you enjoyed the video, and last but not least, I would like to thank my patrons, Praetor, Excessum, Newsome, Chicken Salad, you guys are amazing. You really keep the channel going and I couldn't appreciate it enough. With that being said, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors and I will see you in the next one.